Warning, Josh is not an expert in any of the crap he talks about. He simply uses his head and does a lot of research so you, the audience, don't have to. Keep in mind, he doesn't know everything, so take the shit he says with a grain of salt. What's going on, everyone? This is Josh from Josh Said What, the podcast that'll change the world. And once again, I have on here with me my good friend, Patrick Boffman, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Man, how you doing? I'm doing good, brother. It's good to see you, man. It's been, yeah. it's been a few weeks here. I know. It's been a crazy few weeks, too. Not yeah. only that, but you're coming off of a W. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Back, uh, when was it? When was the fight? May 15th, 14th? Yeah. May, May yeah. 14th, so... Uh, a little over a month now, almost almost two months. But uh, yeah, man, I got the W back at rough forty seven down in Phoenix. Yeah, and it was a fucking righteous W too. It was a forty five second first round TKO. Is that right? That's right, brother. Yeah, it felt good, man. I needed that one, especially after the March fight. Um, kind of restore some confidence and put another W back on the record. So what am I? Am I uh, two and two now? So yeah. I'm all tied up. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's what I like to hear. Not only that, for the fans, we got a little celebratory shot for That's you right. too. That's right. Yeah, this one's a little bit late. So we're going to go ahead and hit it at nine in the morning, but I'm good with that. <laughs> Fuck it. I've been through this. <laughs> cheers, bro. Yeah. And cheers, man. Congrats. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Yummy. Ooh warm love it Ooh. i'm actually surprised i took that so well that was my first time ever doing fireball I well, you, you don't want to make a face on camera man this shit's live right <laughs> <laughs> bro um you remember moose uh from uh when he was out at rough 47 yes the afterthought show he had me do a shot of jameson at the bar i never done jameson before and so he recorded it too he posted on his instagram <laughs> i think and i saw I, this yeah and i took the shot and you just see me quickly duck my head duck my head behind moose and i'm just like struggling <laughs> yeah i remember this video actually i think i commented on it yeah it was hilarious i i inhaled like half the shot but i was able to pull it through just fine yeah <laughs> but yeah let's talk more about it you fought May fi- more May fourteenth against Matthew Stanger. It was gonna be a guaranteed stand and bang, and you guys did exactly that, and you got the W. How'd you feel going into it? Um, well, I I really felt good, man. I think physically, um, I I felt the best that I I have as far as the the prep for the fight, mm-hmm. um, just all the different training that I had I had done for this fight. And what I had worked on since the last fight in March felt really good as far as training physically, mentally. Um, I don't think I was as confident mentally going into this fight with Matt as I was the one um, with Bradley back in March, which some people don't find it hard to believe because I was more evenly matched with Matt. But uh, I don't know. The guy was just weird, man. The guy's a character. He fucking friend requested me like the day <laughs> the day we got matched. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck do I do here? Do I say yes? Do I say no? What's up? But uh, no, we ended up being friends on Facebook. And uh, he's a good dude, man. What can I say? He's uh, he's all about this shit, which I love. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't really think that guy gives a fuck. Like, he'll go in there and fucking fight anybody, I think. Um, so I don't think he was afraid of me at all. I don't. I, even after the knockout, I don't think he was. he's afraid of me. You know what I mean? Like, he's just that type of guy. Um. But definitely surprising. He's a little bit quicker, more kind of like more fluid than I thought he would be. You know, yeah. I thought it would be all stiff in there, especially coming off such a long break of fighting. Yeah. Um, and he did have to move up weight classes to fight me. He, he normally fights at 185. So, okay. um, yeah, a lot of people don't realize that, man. He, he, he took that fight at my weight class. So he had to, you know, put on a few extra pounds just to be able to make that weight, um, which it may not seem like a lot of weight, but at the same time, man, when you're used to like me, for example, I pretty much walk around. I mean, I live at two Oh nine, I guess it doesn't matter like how hard I train, how much weight I lose. I still stay at around 210 pounds. Um, so if I were to like gain a bunch of weight for a fight or lose a bunch of weight for a fight, it changes you so much physically Mm -hmm. and what you're used to. So being that it was pretty short notice, you know, and he did have to gain weight and, kind of get ready for then uh hats off to him for that so appreciate you taking that fight matt yeah 
he was a really cool dude honestly like i i mentioned this in uh the episode that i'm still publishing by mentioning it. like i felt a little bit like unsure like uh because he was wanting to interview and then i interviewed him during the pre-fights and like unsure like the bias since i'm with you didn't want to play favoritism but then i'm also working with mma stalker so i was like feeling a bit awkward but he's such a cool dude he was yeah. so chill so easy to talk to he just seemed laid back and just ready to do anything have fun yeah yeah he's all about it man I, you said you're coming up to lake Havasu, matt i don't know i haven't seen you up here yet bro i think i think he's scared or something i don't know <laughs> might, might be scared to come hang out and drink too much i don't know <laughs> exactly we're calling you out man <laughs> yeah come up to lake Havasu, brother <laughs> yeah yeah no it was now not only that but this time too you were a sponsor for rough nation and you had your logo all over the cage how'd you like that yeah that was actually that was the coolest part man rough 47 mm -hmm. was lit and uh that was that was probably the best part of it just walking through you know before the fights and just taking a look at all the the media work that rough has done and now that we're sponsors of the rough events you know we got our logo everywhere and mm -hmm. it's just dope man it's like uh it's a it feels a, like a bit of an accomplishment um i mean i'm not too much weight behind it because essentially all i'm doing is handing them money and they're printing my logo everywhere but um to be able to sponsor my own fight was dope. Yeah. To, to be able to watch the pay-per-view afterwards and see my company, you know, going out there and supporting me was dope because hopefully one day I'm still fighting and, and then I don't have any control over what's going on here and they're still sponsoring me, you know? Yeah. What I mean? Yeah. They still want to sponsor me. So that'd be the, that'd be the life. Yeah. Yeah. That'd yeah. be awesome. That was, that was definitely a cool thing, man. And, um, I'm still a sponsor, so I'm going to look forward to, even though I'm not fighting on the next rough, which I'm sure we're going to talk about here, but even I'm not on the next card, uh, it's still going to sponsor it's still going down there. Um, this week, actually I start back training, not myself, but mostly helping out the guys at bridge city combat, getting ready for their events. Um, mm -hmm. just, you know, helping them spar whatever I could do. So, yeah so and, and august 6th will be uh rough 48 and then we're gonna have over at bridge city we're gonna have devin ray he's gonna come back off that fucking dominant first round <sighs> submission like i don't even, i don't call that even a real naked choke because the way that he he got the head kick he slammed him and then it was like a neck crank and the dude just couldn't take it no, I, I, they need to ban devin man they <laughs> there's no way or what's what's up they need to like really figure out this matchmaking for that kid because I mean, He's there's no threat. way we could be putting these these poor poor souls in front of him like that again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, and the dude was a kickboxer too. I was so shocked the fact that Devin caught him with the head kick against a kickboxer. Yeah. I was like, damn, that was badass. Devin Ray, man, uh, good job, brother. He he really is the definition uh, of a well-rounded uh, MMA guy. Like he mm -hmm. he he is his base and it's a solid solid base is wrestling for sure. That is his forte, but. Uh, He's a great striker, man. Like he's yeah. he's fun to spar because he's always challenging himself, always changing it up. Um, and he's just uh, he's he's really well rounded. So exciting to see that win back in May, and definitely definitely excited to see some upcoming fights for him. And not only him, but um, Brandon, man, Brandon mm -hmm. Elizondo. His ass, his ass beast in the last fight. He did take a loss, but it was such a phenomenally better performance than the fight before that. Mm -hmm. And not only was it better on your part, bro, but he uh, his opponent was much better. His opponent, what, who was it? Mark Coates? Uh, what was it? Uh, it was... Um, no, it was Mark. Yeah, Mark. He fought Rafael Montini. Yeah. I forget the guy's name, but he's also going to be fighting it, on it, Rough 48. Yeah, it was his debut too, right? Yeah. He was and, really good, man. And he was, yeah. he was uh, physically more dominating than Brandon. And I think it's because he's an older guy. He, mm -hmm. He's a little bit more built. Brandon's a little bit younger. Um, so he was definitely stronger, but Brandon really did some really, really good things in the first round to stop some takedowns um, and just had a fucking great fight, man. I mean, he really mm -hmm. fought. So very proud of him also, um, even, yeah. even if he didn't get the win, you know, he still he still went out there and uh, upheld the reputation of Bridge City Combat and, you know, the training and shit that's going on there with the MMA guys. So hats off to Brandon. And then uh, hopefully I, I'm the 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 cursed one it would be trenton fighting hopefully <laughs> trenton's fight goes through and it's actually yep. uh you know it actually stays on the schedule because that is somebody i always want to see fight man like yeah i don't care i could i could quit tomorrow but i'll still want to be going to trenton's fights um yeah, well, he, well into the future because he, he definitely is somebody much like um devin that has a great future in mma for sure 
Yeah, and isn't he coming off of a head kick, head kick knockout in the first round at like WFC? Um, what is he two and zero? So I know his first win was a head kick knockdown. I don't, I don't know how he finished the second guy. I know it was a first round knockout. That that yeah. I want to do remember. I just forget how. Maybe it was a head kick. Yeah. I'm sure it was, man, because you know he sneaks those in there because he's he's again just like all these guys. Uh, they're all wrestling, you know. So yeah, being that they're so quick and dangerous on the ground and to get you down to the ground man it makes stand up a whole lot of a whole different ball game when you have a wrestler yep. standing in front of you because now you as a stand-up guy don't really have any confidence to you know play your game so exactly the wrestlers, wrestlers they got man. that sneaky overhand right because you think that they're going to shoot for the takedown but they just catch you over yeah but they wear singlets so you know what i mean like the wrestlers oh, yeah. they're badass but they wear singlets <laughs> so <laughs> i just <laughs> that's awesome uh, and oh yeah i was the, i remember i talked to brandon after the fight at the bar and i was telling him like dude uh, your performance when he was standing up he was actually piecing the guy up and he was having Absolutely. some great exchanges it was just the wrestling aspect that kind of caught him and like there was a lot of scene or situations too where i saw if he was just able to slip at least one of those underhooks he could have prevented it mm -hmm. going to the ground and he would have just held it up but yeah he fought his ass off he didn't let it go uh, he didn't let it end early. He kept it at least going to the distance, and he kept going. I told yeah. him straight up too. He did a badass job. It really, it really was. Um, and in speaking on his stand up, I spar Brandon quite a bit, and you know he's he's shorter than me. He's smaller than me. He's not. He doesn't have the reach. Uh, doesn't have the power. But he uh, he's got really solid technique, man. Mm -hmm. Really, really solid technique. I wish I had the skill set that he has at my size and strength um obviously i wish i was his age too i'd be a lot better off but if i had if i had his skill set I, I think i'd be i would just kind of like work on my conditioning at that point mm -hmm. whereas like right now i still want to develop some kicks and yeah different techniques you know where i was like nah every time i spar brandon he's he's uh creative he's quick he uh he he's a fighter man like ev even if he's getting pieced up by me you know, and and I keep touching his face or whatever. He he doesn't shy away. He keep he come comes in, man. He's really tough. So mm -hmm. that that is something that uh, somebody's gonna find out one day. I'm telling you, somebody in there's gonna experience a stand up of Brandon. <laughs> yep, it'd be a great match ma match up if we if like Jason over at Rough Nation, he found somebody that was just the same that was gonna try to stand up and just get in those exchanges, get in the pocket, work those combos. And then I feel like we'll definitely see like a really good version of Brandon sure. in that yeah. situation. Absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, no, that, that event was just absolutely crazy. Like that was the first event that we did. I was just in the background the entire time. But then the second one, you saw me, I was just right next to the cage with my camera, just recording. Yeah, you everything. were busy that night, dude. You <laughs> were fucking busy, dude. <laughs> it I mean, was you, awesome. you were, you were like, you know, helping with doing doing the stuff for my fight and the cornering and all that and just running around fucking taking photos and doing videos for MMA Stalker. That was good to see, man. You were definitely busy. Yeah, it's still I I've been loving to tell this story like straight up at my work when I get people that come in and out. And if there's people from Phoenix, I'll just start the conversation and I'll say about how like um, especially after Devin's fight, I just have my camera. I'm walking around the cage and with the crowded areas, I'm just come on. Let's fucking go. <laughs> Trying to get yeah. that crowd reaction. It was so awesome. Yeah, that shit's underrated, man. That shit is so needed. And it's definitely uh, I like seeing it. So I appreciate that, man. You got some you got a good vibe. And especially when we're down there in the moment um and then just because you said that um uh, cj uh the one of the guys at rough he um he was going fucking crazy didn't the stage fuck up that night or something yeah twice there was one of the beams underneath it, it uh collapsed in yeah on two different occasions so it was like bro <laughs> but I, bro but as he was fixing that or whatever just to amp the crowd he was running around screaming and shit too that shit was motivating <laughs> yeah i saw he had like a like a little gif made of it where it just shows him let's go yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah that was so awesome that was so awesome i'm hoping my goal is for this next event I want to do an interview with CJ in the octagon. That would be sick. That would be cool, man. That would be sick. I Definitely. called him out in the last episode. I'm going to call you out again, man. <laughs> do it. Do it. Time's ticking. Yeah, exactly. Man, no, it was just wild. It was just wild. And then I don't know if you want to um, uh, jump into, because uh, you're originally going to fight August 6th on Rough 48. 
but then you ended up having your injury, correct? Yeah. So for those of you that, that haven't heard or whatever from any of my posts, but uh, let's see, the fight was May 14th. I want to say like around early June, I was up at Lucero Jiu Jitsu with my buddy Mike and uh, just kind of going hanging out with those guys and just doing some no gi shit. And my fucking left knee popped, man. Like, I didn't know what it was. I thought I thought it just kind of, like, literally popped to, like, relieve itself. But uh, mm -hmm. sure enough, I tore my MCL that night in my left leg. And then because of everything I experienced with that, I realized, fuck, dude, I've had a torn right MCL for months and months and months and months that I just pretty much trained through the injury, which is good and bad. It, mm -hmm. it, never, it never healed 100%. And so, like, now... I haven't done anything MMA related for the last, since June. So about a month and about mm -hmm. five weeks, I've done nothing but wear really, really robust braces and just kind of work out strength building and all that. Yeah. And uh, they both feel phenomenally better than what I remember my knees feeling like in the, in the middle of all this training and fighting. Yeah. You know, cause they're finally, like I'm finally starting to get more of my, flexibility back yeah. and just shit that was affecting me before is starting to go away. Um, they don't feel a hundred percent by any means. I'm, I'm getting back to the point now where I can shadow box, I'd say at 70%, 80% shadow boxing. I mean, I'm not like doing full turns. I'm not, I'm not rotating my, you know, my hips a hundred percent because I don't want to put too much stress on my knee joints, mm -hmm. um, by torquing on them too much. So I'm, I'm literally just kind of milking it really yeah. to be honest like more than i'm used to because it's hard for me to do it's hard for me to sit still man yeah so when i'm like fucking injured it sucks man i get i get pretty uh upset with myself but this is a little bit different i do need the break and i do need the heal. so i think that by the time i'm done with this process you'll see me at 205 pounds but a much different look like i think i'll be bigger stronger good faster and just all healed up man ready to fucking go hell yeah when do you think that you feel you'll be ready to go like do you think you'll maybe have a chance to step in like towards the end of this year or maybe the beginning of next year i'm thinking before the end of the year i should get one more fight okay so i'm not i'm not gonna rush it let's see what is it it's just beginning of uh july right now yeah so july all of july all of august all of july and all of august i don't think i'll even think about mma like okay. i'll literally not even think about it i'll just keep eating right and not being a piece of shit and going to the gym every damn day just to stay in shape and mm -hmm. then at the end of august uh i'll start looking into training again and then at least that's a, i need one more month to get back into it to see mm -hmm. what i want to do that the big thing is is if they don't heal correctly i'll need surgery and if i need surgery there's no fucking way i'm gonna go go amateur fight again i mean it just doesn't make any sense to put the time and money into surgery and then go blow it all by taking a kick in round one of a fight i trained for for three months and then it's over it's like yeah i mean i'll still train but yeah it's just it just depends man so so you'd feel like if if it does result or resort to that point where you have to get the surgery, you wouldn't want to fight anymore? I, I feel like that would be my decision right now because okay. I don't know anything about the timeline. I actually, Matt, I talked to Matt Stenger, my last opponent, and he had uh, MCL injury. And uh, he ended up having to have surgery, and he was even out for like a year wow. with surgery. So I'm like, maybe I didn't – maybe uh, – I didn't have as severe as I thought or being told to where if I just take it easy, I will be all good in a year, but I don't want to take a fucking year, you know? <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. A year. That's a long time. It's a way long time. Like th what they, what they feel like now compared to the week or two after I, I tore this one is night and day. So I just feel like I need to just keep building strength and taking it easy and just at least for the next few months. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think I'll be all right, man. I think uh, I'll be back back to normal as far as that goes. And I'll be, like I said, even stronger and faster. And then uh, just if, at least one more fight this year. Yeah. Yeah. No, hell yeah. That's it, the goal. It, it kind of depends on how rough schedules them. Like, what is this? August 6th is 49 or 48. It'll be 48. And so, then I know they're going to be looking to do a kickboxing event uh, October, which I'm actually trying to get Dustin on. Okay. Um, and then they have, they're doing a rough 49. And then they also have a road to rough 
uh, I think I think it's a road to rough tournament going on. So I their saw first that. ever. So I think there'll be an event uh, August, uh, October, and I think November. Okay. So yeah, yeah. I think at some point I can jump in one of those. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want to do too early, but I also don't want to wait too long. Yeah. Because I I mean I was on a roll, man. I was feeling good physically, mentally, and then this shit i'm just like fuck you know yeah i kind of i kind of want to take a break i'm not gonna lie i just kind of <laughs> kind of want to fucking you know not have to go to training every goddamn night but uh now i'm like itching to get the fuck back there like it's been too long it's been five weeks i feel like a, a fat sack of shit dude i need to get off my ass and go train <laughs> yeah for real uh what was today's friday wednesday was the first day i finally got back over to fjords Cause just, I was on like a, like a four or five month layoff just cause I had so much stuff going on. And then I'm now three weeks into going back into lifting and I've just been going like six days a week. And Wednesday I did Jaime's uh, boxing class. Yep. Saw that. Oh my God. I was me, Dustin. And I think his name is Danny. We we're just drenched in sweat. Like it was, it was like a small little river running through the pads. <laughs> <laughs> it was bad, but we were just going at it nonstop. Dustin, I was actually very impressed with Dustin because I've never done a class with him before. And he was the only one that wasn't constantly going to drink water. He, he was the one that was working the hardest and oh, especially yeah. on the bag too. Me and Danny, uh, we were we were just kind of like constantly having issues trying to keep our breath. And him, nah, he's just going. He's just going. Yeah, and I was yeah, like, man. Damn. Hopefully, hopefully he can get a fight in this year too. Uh, even if it's just kickboxing, I know. Yeah. I know that's definitely what he prefers, um, because that's I think his his baseline is uh, karate. Man, he's got some mm-hmm. phenomenal kicks. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's always a killer. Those classes. Will sp- especially just straight boxing <laughs> yeah and and especially down in fiore's endorphin factory it's like a sauna in that motherfucker sometimes so yeah and he purposely turns the ac off yeah. so he really gets you a sweat going <laughs> yep we know how to do it man that's how it started <laughs> yeah exactly i weighed i weighed myself the morning of wednesday i was at 174.5 and then i went to the gym to go lift i did deadlift squats I did bicep curls and like three, four other workouts. That was just a blend of back, upper body, and my legs. And then I go to boxing class, and then I weighed myself afterwards. I was down to like one seventy one point five. Oh yeah. So I just sweated all that off. <laughs> Hell yeah. God, it was. It's great though being back in the gym. I always say, and I was actually on uh, the other podcast that I'm doing now, throwing hands on ASAP Sports Network. Marky Mark Coates was on it, and we were both just vibing, saying, "Like, yeah, it's almost training is like a therapy. That's like that's like meditation for sure." Yeah, that's it's when it boils down to it, man. I'm 34 years old, no kids, no wife, no family, so I got a lot of free time. When when you take all that away, um, obviously I own a couple businesses so that takes a lot of my time and this and that third but uh ultimately it comes down to hobbies filling filling all that that void and yeah it's just a therapy like it is so needed not only not only is it a therapy because it's constructive you Mm -hmm. know you're focused doing it but it's a it's a relief it's a it's an outlet for for you know frustrations man um not saying that i look forward to sparring these guys so i could beat their fucking ass but (laughs) You know, it's just just being able to just uh, let loose a little bit mm-hmm. and and kind of let some aggression out, especially in jujitsu or especially in the some of the wrestling shit that we do in there. It just really helps, you know. Mentally, yeah. it's good for us. I think. Exactly. Yeah. It's like even just like regular gym workouts and lifting that only does so much. And but like you go into the gym and then you hit the bag, you do some sparring. Just the the difference in the mindset too of the of working out. I just love it because you get to let out that aggression or that frustration. Mm-hmm. You have a constructive way to let it out. And then it also teaches you the discipline, how to persevere through uh, adversity, strengthen your will and everything. And it's just hands down. It's the reason why I fell in love with the sport. Yeah, definitely. There's there's something to be said about um, just the di- the differences of com- combatives versus, you know, normal athletic sports mm-hmm. and all those uh, weightlifting or whatever. But. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't see myself ever really stopping contributing to this to to my mm-hmm. own growth as far as martial arts go. I'd always want to constantly be learning, um, even if I'm not in a dedicated class setting. You know, just mm-hmm. being just being a part of some of these organizations and and knowing some of the people that are working and 
helping out uh at least in our community you know and in, mm -hmm. in that industry is is enough for me i think but uh yeah it's it's something that it's like i think if, if i had to choose like whether i keep you know lifting weights or doing any type of athletic type of shit that i would want to be focused on martial arts you yeah. know and as, as, as much as possible uh and then once i do have a family pass that type of i guess passion down to my kids hopefully you know we'll see mm -hmm. we'll see if they're into that type of shit maybe they just want to play damn computer games all day or something <laughs> we'll see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. either way i love them <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's what i'm hoping to do too with my kids because i would love just just the way that i saw martial arts growing up like just growing up watching jet lee and fearless watching jackie chan Ung Bak, and all this stuff like that was what introduced me into it yeah and then just growing up with ufc the ufc games and everything and it's just the overall process the grind of it and the just the workouts alone for it it's just it's like it, it cr creates a different breed of a person because lifting and just doing normal cardio is drastically different versus how your cardio and how your strength works when in actual applying it in wrestling and yeah, jiu-jitsu absolutely or in standing and clinch because like um uh i forget who it was but there was this one guy that i did some wrestling with and he and i we had uh, gone to the gym together at one point and i was benching more than him same with deadlift and squat and everything but then when we got into the gym because of his wrestling background he just kept on getting hold of me and kept on bringing me to the ground yeah so it's like it's the what you do lifting wise it really doesn't it could translate somewhat but it's just a difference between the type of adversity you face in mma when you're in that situation definitely yeah uh i agree 100 percent with what you said man people don't realize oh you could be a big tough looking guy but i mean that just means you can mm -hmm. get knocked out quicker man <laughs> exactly yeah, exactly you still need the skill set i agree with that for sure yeah yeah, no, it's so awesome. And then, oh yeah, I, I was gonna bring it up. It just popped in my head. It still cracks me up. I've been showing people too the video of where I was just screaming at time in the middle of the cage. Yeah, that was awesome. That was a dream of mine to do that. Josh Buffer. <laughs> God, that was awesome. That was so funny too. Your comments, like you got kicked for Rich Franklin out of the shot to do it. <laughs> yeah, that was. Oh, uh, well, that was that YouTube video you posted. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you told him to fucking move. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, could you just move real quick? I know you guys are talking right now. <laughs> yeah, but... I felt so bad, and I, <laughs> no, I was like, <laughs> I don't think you felt bad at all. <laughs> it like didn't even phase you. I know. Like, uh, it's like you didn't even give a shit that that was Rich Franklin, bro. Like, hey. <laughs> Can you fucking move so I could do this or what? It's for the gram, Rich. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Like the entire time I was at the event, I was like, I want to do it. I want to do it. Because I've been wanting... I'd say I've been wanting to just do that single thing for at least like 10 years now. And I'm like, I'm not going to be the person that's going to regret later for not doing it. Just fuck it. I'll do it. And then I ended up doing it like towards the very end and it was well worth no, it. No, you won't regret that, man. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. That was, that was an epic night. And you see like uh, Moose, he was in the shot and he's like, wow. And then you see bro <laughs> from MMA stalker in the background. Hell yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I know it was awesome. Now I'm really excited for rough 48 and everything that's going to be in store for there. Yeah, make sure you guys check that out, man. Even though, me personally, I won't be on the card. There's plenty of other Lake Havasu City locals, uh, fighters out of Bridge City Combat that will be down there, and we talked about them earlier. Mm -hmm. um, but even even if they weren't, man, just this is the event in itself. Uh, we are sponsors, so we'd like to attend and, and make our presence known. So we'll definitely be down there and looking to hang out, man. Hell yeah. Yeah, exactly. I plan on doing, uh, hopefully I could get enough time in, but I'm hopefully going to try to get in like as much promoting around town here as possible. For sure. Literally the post that I did for us at the last event, after the weigh-ins, the video that I recorded in that hotel room, that got like over 1500 views in less than 12 hours. And then the other post afterwards where I had the pictures of you, of Devin and the announcement, and I just posted it all over Facebook. That shit had over 6,000 views. It had hundreds and hundreds of likes shares saves and everything it literally the amount of views that it got here in like havasu was more than 10 percent of the city's total population i think i think you got so many views on that because you used a cover photo of me flexing man exactly Pretty sure <laughs> that was the money shot i didn't want to say it i didn't want to say it but i'm gonna go ahead and say it now <laughs> 
No, nah, yeah, nah, I guarantee just, it was the money shot. No, that it's, I think it was just the, the vibe, man. The whole night, you know, we had a, a couple wins coming out of our city, um, and they were big wins. You know, they were mm-hmm. they were phenomenal wins. Um, it was just it just a good showing for our city and. Uh, you know, AE, our, our local gun manufacturing company here, was mm-hmm. sponsors. So it just, oh, yeah. it was just a good vibe, man. It's a good yeah. time. It was, it was a great time. Yeah, and it was, it was just wild to see everything and just the fact that it, it's oh, like a lot of people don't really think about it, but like Havasu, it has a pretty big fan base for martial arts. Yeah, there's a lot of people here that really, really loves the sport. Yeah, I don't know why we don't have any promoters trying to host events out of Lake Havasu yeah. City. I actually, I plan on putting an Ari I think I already mentioned it before but trying to put a bug in Ruff's ear see if they could post an event out here because I mean the mayor he's the he's the manager of uh, the London Bridge Resort yeah we have the London out. Bridge in our city I don't know if you guys if you yeah. guys realize that but it, it is a tourist attraction yeah uh Lake Havasu City is definitely on the map so the only thing is we don't have any correct venues there's no indoor option period yeah you'd have just to set not. it up you def yeah you'd have to set it up um and any of the the sizable venues just they're they don't work as far as the layout and the way that the building itself is designed mm-hmm. so we'd be looking at doing like an outside option and that for sure could work i mean especially yeah. during the summer i mean if you start fights at 5 p.m it's it's a little bit warm still but you know it's perfect it's not gonna get too cold it's not gonna be rainy or nothing like that so yeah and i've seen other promotions too they will just be in a completely empty parking lot and they'll just set up in this massive tent and just get everything inside set it up and the swap meet over on the back roads i feel like that would be a perfect location because it's big enough area that you could set up in a tent a full area and then for all the fighters and everybody that comes to watch the fights yeah you have the london bridge which last october was the 50th year anniversary that it was shipped over here oh nice yeah it was the entire channel the island was completely man-made just for the bridge right yeah we got that you got the channel the lake itself there's all types of stuff here and it would be just absolutely awesome if we had a a promotion here doing a fight event i'd like to see an mma event on the island man yeah grassy park right there rotary park Mm mm-hmm and uh or sarah park it's called or whatever it's called but there's a dog park and then open area and it's just right by the channel but uh that 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 would be cool man mm-hmm. you know i think that would that would help with some just some local stuff going on here and people would be interested in watching that i know they've done a few of them here in town or at least one of them back in the day somebody hosted yeah them. over at the aquatic center mm-hmm. yeah so i think that would be awesome man i'd look forward to that but besides that if anybody could lock on another Parker fight or even Laughlin, yeah, you have the same situation to where you're gonna you're gonna get a lot of locals to. I'm confident that myself, I could probably sell a hundred tickets, no problem. Yeah, a hundred one zero zero. I could sell a hundred tickets locally just by myself. So, I'm thinking our gym could probably sell three hundred tickets. You know oh, what I yeah. mean? Like no problem. Yeah, and they have, there's actually Rough 49 is going to be in Parker, actually, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah, that's so far what I've been told. I don't know about the date yet, but uh, mm-hmm. yeah, looking forward to that one. That that might be the the one I step back in on is Rough 49 down in Parker. Yeah, hopefully, and plus it's only going to be a 40, 45-minute drive, so you won't have to deal with that three-and-a-half-hour drive and the, the lag from it and everything. It'll be a hell of a lot easier just to get everything done and knocked out. Right, Yeah. definitely. Yep. So. Yeah, that's fucking crazy. It's just, it's insane. I'd say 2022 has been a crazy year, hands down. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's, it seems like it's going by real quick. We're only halfway <laughs> through it, but, it, you know, we're keeping so busy the first half of, half of the year. It's like, wow, we're already here halfway through, but now I, I have a feeling the rest of it's going to go by real slow for me. <laughs> it already yeah. has. The last month has been pretty uh, pretty slow yeah yeah i could definitely understand that because you're just you're itching to get back in there because it's like when even when you're in a training camp and you're in there day after day after day once you start with a with a layoff or like a break you just like your nerves start itching you're like a workaholic that just needs to get back in because you can't just sit there and do nothing right yeah i don't want to lose my edge you know Mm -hmm. cardio is a big part of it or it's just the lack of training is just going to affect you it's just you're not breathing as hard every day then you're gonna have a tougher time coming back you gotta get back into shape quote unquote Mm -hmm. so 
I want to stay as close to that line as possible without yeah. injuring myself. Yeah, exactly. You know, like I don't, I don't want to be so active that I'm like going to the fucking lake one day and I twist my knee coming down a hill or some bullshit because I just was okay. I'm not training hard, but I'm also over here doing too much. You know, I need to. Yeah. It's hard to just sit at home and not do shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Basically what I'm doing. So, <laughs> yeah, that's what I was doing for like a good solid four or five months. And then I'm so glad I got back in the gym because it's just you feel so more energized and just like you got so much more that you could do once you right. get in there and you get yeah. the habit going. Feel rejuvenated. I mm -hmm. mean, the break is necessary. Don't get me wrong. I'm living it up. Uh, actually, I just went to Vegas the other night, which I don't ever do that. But Man, my, nice. buddy, my buddy was like, hey, do you want to go? I, I got to take my other buddy back to the airport. So we're just going to chill for the night. And that that ended up being pretty damn fun. And yeah, something that definitely would never get accomplished if I'm in the middle of a training cycle. So, uh, you know, not bad. One five hundred dollars on the jackpot. So I'll take that. <laughs> hey, there you go. go. Keep going up there every night then. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Freaking at rough 46. I was I was doing some gambling at the casino over at the uh, Gila River Resort. And I was up like 200 bucks. And then, but because I was like, you know what? I'll just keep trying. I ended up losing all of that. Yeah. And I was like, damn. <laughs> but it's it was still fun. <laughs> it was like 2, 3 in the morning. It goes down to zero. And I'm like, fuck, I'm an idiot. I should have just walked away. No, we, <laughs> we were playing it. blackjack. And the dealer paid me out the 500. And I put that in my pocket and just kept playing with the rest of the. Oh, yeah. I told myself, I'll, I can go down to zero now. Like, if I go to zero with all this in front of me, I'm cool because mm. I still have 500 in my pocket that's yeah. all brand new, never touched. So it, it was cool. She handed me a bunch of chips, and I just put all five in my pocket and then kept playing with the rest of the shit on the table. And then eventually, I think I eventually uh, lost all that and oh, okay. then went and cashed out. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So I was probably bought in at $150 and walked away with five, so about $350. <laughs> nice. There you go. There you go. That's awesome. Yeah. And then I know you've been uh, up to other stuff, too. I think I saw you have a, a new business, right? You're renting out uh, canopies. And yes. Whatnot. Yeah, actually. Um, so some guy here in town, Jesse Clark, started it. It's called BYOB Cabana Rentals. And, uh, you know, it was up and running, doing good. And then he had an issue with the city, not approving him to do certain things. So I ended up buying it from him. Um, and I'm actually waiting right now to get the approval from the city for my license with my name on it and there's certain oh. stipulations like they don't want me delivering the cabanas down to the channel and they don't want me helping people set them up and really yeah well, yeah so i've been talking with a couple of city guys over there and you know they're gonna they're gonna approve the license as a uh you know just go ahead and approve it but then i'll there's restrictions we can't do certain things what time is it bro it is 9 47 gotcha if yeah. you want we can wrap it up if you want yeah, we need to. But uh, yeah, so Cabana Rentals, um, it's not quite full blown, but I can definitely still rent them out at this point. And there'll be obviously more word passed on that as soon as I get everything finalized and we'll start promoting it and all that. I don't I don't do any promotion of it. I just kind of have everything going, but not really pushing it too much. So but pretty simple. Just rent some cabanas, some chairs, tables, ice chest, uh, like a grill. Uh, mm -hmm. Bluetooth speaker, just kind of have a good time. The idea was to be able to set it up for you and take it down for you. So there's, you know, no muss, no mm -hmm. fuss, and you just pay us our fee and we go on our way. But uh, now the city's kind of like, well, you can't deliver it to the beach. Wait a minute. Yeah, I think that's Do kind of weird. Doesn't fucking Domino's deliver pizzas down to the beach? Yeah. Are you, you going to call Domino's and stop them from delivering to the beach like I was the city administrators? <laughs> yeah, I didn't think so. So I don't know what the big deal is about a veteran, right? A veteran that served this country. You're going you're gonna to stop me from making money for my family? Come on, man. That's not right. Don't do that. Did you hear that? Lake Havasu City administrators are, are purposely denying United States Marine Corps veterans their rights, right? I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's not that serious, <laughs> but we're going to win, man. I'm going I'm to get my way, and we're going to go. eventually be doing business the way that we should be doing business without any restrictions from the city, and you can mark my words. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, man. For sure. 
and then i know you got people here so i'll go and wrap it up so yeah again thank you so much man for coming out i'm glad we're able to get that shot in yeah brother or, yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> if i could reach out but no it was awesome a great i'm glad we're back here again hopefully we'll do this again for yeah, sure absolutely yeah, man and, i appreciate the time yeah and thank you guys so much for watching this is josh said what the podcast they'll change the world like share subscribe yada yada, yada do that. everything Comment everything too. exactly and we'll see you in the next one